Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We've got lots of stuff to get through in today's video. I'm also putting out a second bonus video for today, which is detailing Nintendo Switch and either a pro or a complete successor to the Switch. So that's an exclusive, so feel free to check that out as well. I'll of course link it in the description of the video along with the accompanying article. But anyway, getting on to the news for today, the first thing I'd like to discuss is Intel's Alder Lake S as it allegedly supports dual-channel DDR5 memory. And this is according to an article on videocards.com. And we also have confirmation, it says with uh, quotation marks, and uh, this is from a leak from Coreboot, that the configurations of Alder Lake are 8 plus 8 for the highest end, which is, of course, big slash small cores, which is much the same as we see with, say, ARM, with the big slash little configuration. It's still extremely ambiguous how this would function for a Windows environment. After all, you can kind of understand it on a mobile platform if you're just, say, doing something very simple, like, I don't know, you're just browsing Facebook or you're on Chrome or whatever, fine. Uh, the small cores can do everything that's needed, or you're just like on the um, using the phone for like, well, uh, shock and horror making a phone call. It doesn't need the big cores to be active. But on a desktop, well, yeah, how this would function is going to be super duper curious. There's also various configurations too. Uh, allegedly, with Alder Lake S, there's an 8 plus 4 configuration, so 8 big cores and 4 small cores. And there's even an 8 plus 0 configuration. So, for example, um, this gets really complicated because it doesn't seem like they're really pushing the 2 and 4 big cores too much. There's not like uh, 4 plus uh, 4 small cores. So it looks like 8 plus 0, uh, for example, would be interesting to benchmark versus 8 plus 8. Like, what would be the difference in terms of performance for gaming? That's kind of where I'm coming from, more from the gaming side of things, but also productivity as well. Yes, I know that mainstream processes are not ideal necessarily for, say, doing high-end 3D rendering, but still, most... Um, mainstream CPUs now are more than capable, especially if you're just learning stuff like, I don't know, Blender, for example. And when AMD have offerings, well, like the uh, later to release Zen 316 cores, yeah, you can kind of understand it's going to really be down to clock frequency as well as IPC information. I'm going to be mighty curious how all of this unfolds over the next few years. Also, as a bit of a bonus, it's worth noting that there's also been a patent from AMD, which is very similar to hybrid computing slash big slash little slash whatever you want to call it. Although AMD's a wording seems to indicate that it's more going to be for, well, battery-powered devices, such as, um, let's say, I don't know, like a laptop, for example. They actually state, background, battery-powered computing devices such as mobile devices have become commonplace. A typical mobile device operates over a wide performance range according to workloads, requirements, and different performance ranges are conventionally mapped to different operating modes, with power consumption proportionally related to the performance. Long story short, there's high-end um, cores, and then obviously there's smaller cores. So what basically happens is if a workload, um, so a workload, a thread, for example, tries to execute on the lower performance processor, and if it has a feature, an instruction, whatever, that is not supported, then it will basically halt the execution of that thread and will basically divert that workload to the more powerful processor. And this obviously is, in once again, uh, an effort to save battery life. I wonder if this is not going to be like Intel's implementation. This is pure speculation, but I wonder instead if this is going to be purely for something like Renoir. Um, 
judging from the uh, diagrams in figure 1 and f 2 and 3, it doesn't look like necessarily they're using like this on an MCM multi-chip design. It doesn't look like it's chiplets because it would be very logical, at least, you know, on the face of it, to have, let's say, I'm just throwing out numbers, but let's say eight of these lower end processors on one chiplet and eight on another, and then you can kind of mix and match depending on what you're doing. But I imagine that uh, there are going to be some problems with that, specifically resolving, uh, revolving, excuse me, around things like latency and caches and all of this stuff. So I'm curious how, uh, at least with what we're seeing here, it looks like they're on the same die, but maybe it's different in the final implementation. I think something like this for an APU on a laptop makes an awful lot of sense. And of course, other things too, like tablets. And yeah, I don't think that this is going to be a product which comes out tomorrow, because obviously, as I've always said, a patent does take quite a long time to come to fruition anyway. And I don't think this is going to necessarily be for the next generation products. But I think AMD having this as a solution to continuously push better battery life it just makes sense. And obviously, if you're, all you're doing is, say, web browsing or maybe writing a Word document, theoretically, that could just be taken care of by the lower-end processor, or should I say the less powerful processor. And now, from one piece of AMD news to another piece of AMD news, and we are going to be discussing Cezanne, which is the actual successor to Renoir. These are a series of APUs, and Rogame has discovered one entry on the Sysoft Sandra database. This APU is running on the Celadon CZN Renoir platform, and there are still some things which are mysterious, specifically revolving around the CPU configuration, more on that in just a moment. But we do have A, at least knowledge now that engineering samples are being tested, and B, we have some information as to the uh, GPU, and it is still Vega based with eight compute units, and of course with Vega and uh, RDNA, there are 64 stream processors per CU, which means a grand total of 512 uh, shaders total. They apparently are running 100 megahertz faster, which is not massively faster than what we have with Renoir, but uh, they are also running in the same configuration, so that's eight uh, compute units. What we don't know is if AMD have further refined the Vega architecture. Remember, with Renoir, although it is also using the Vega-based architecture, it was enhanced considerably, not just in terms of performance per watt, but also raw performance too, over what we saw with AMD's earlier uh, Ryzen uh, 3000 series APUs. So theoretically, anyway, we will still see improvements, but uh, at least on the GPU, Roughly, anyway, the same basic configuration remains consistent. It's just whether AMD have opted to improve the performance at all of the architecture. As for the actual CPU side of the equation, uh, Rogame could not find any entries for the CPU testing, but it's probable it's Zen free based. There's been numerous leaks and uh, several kind of hints that it will be Zen free based, which naturally will mean that there's quite a sizable IPC gain for the Zen free architecture over what we have with the Zen 2 architecture found in Renoir, excuse me. But whether or not it will still be limited to eight CPU cores, we don't know. Most likely, I would say yes, it will be uh, eight CPU cores for these uh, processors, but could be wrong. The Ryzen uh, 4000, or could be 5000, as we've discussed, AMD are allegedly considering changing the name of the desktop SKUs uh, to better match what we see with the APUs. But either way, uh, allegedly we will see the desktops launch um, late Q3, possibly early Q4 this year, although of course AMD have not confirmed that, and they will be a pretty sizable leap forward over what we have with uh, the Ryzen 3000 series, 
for numerous reasons, IPC gains, the unified cash between the CCXs as well is going to be pretty massive, I suspect, for games. And there's also an increase in clock speed. Just recently, the clock frequency of an engineering sample for the uh, Ryzen 4000 series, once again powered by Zen 3, has hit 4.9 gigahertz. So that's actually slightly up from what we saw earlier, which was... Um, 4.8 gigahertz for engineering samples. Will they hit that 5 gigahertz mark? Who the hell knows? But even if they only hit, let's say, 200 megahertz ish higher, plus just improvements in IPC, it's hard to not imagine that these processes will be drastically faster. As for Cezanne, well, yeah. If they are even more energy efficient and just higher clock frequency and performance, AMD are going to once again be absolutely dominating the mobile segment. And it seems to be happening. The ultimate countdown, at least according to NVIDIA, 21 days and 21 years. And 21, 21 have a couple of very important meanings. The first, the most logical one, is this essentially means there's going to be some type of tease or announcement or something like that for Ampere. Most folks call, of course, Ampere RTX 30, but it could be RTX 21, it could be RTX 57, it could be called, you know, chicken head, for we know ultimately NVIDIA can call these things whatever they want. I think RTX 30 makes logical sense, given they had GTX 10, RTX 20, but Papa Jensen can do largely whatever he wants, of course, in marketing. The rumour has it, by the way, uh, not from one of my sources, but just scuttlebutt talking to people, is that Jensen, up until almost the last minute, was kind of umming and ahhing whether to call it uh, GTX 11 or, uh, or, sorry, or rather RTX 11 or RTX 20. Personally, I prefer the RTX 20 naming scheme, but obviously, well, different people are going to have different opinions on that. The animation is supernova, uh, at least according to what I'm seeing here, and uh, I think that obviously means that they're going to go out bang. Now, the 21 years thing has got a lot of folks confused, and that possibly is because you've not been following graphics for some time. If you cast your mind back 21 years, or you could just do a lazy Google if you prefer, that is when the GeForce brand itself actually came into existence. Um, because that's when the GeForce 256 was released, and it was very important as a graphics architecture. It had some limitations, some of which uh, were resolved with the DDR variant, which uh, obviously doubled memory bandwidth. But uh, GeForce 256 had hardware TNL built in, which basically offloaded things like, well, uh, lighting and geometry work from the CPU and could be put onto the GPU. And this became very important with games pretty quickly. And obviously NVIDIA continued to run with this, and then we started to see further evolutions in GPU architectures, such as the unified uh, design we have now, which is basically... Um, rather than having, say, separate things which handle, um, let's say, vertex work or pixel work, now you have like this unified shader model. This basically meant that previously, because there were separate components to handle these different things, you kind of had these situations where if you had a GPU which, just for the sake of argument, was really good at pixel pushing, then it may suffer more in geometry and vice versa, and it was always arguable what do you actually divert the silicon to, like more of the silicon budget, i.e. obviously having these features essentially take size up on the die, so what do you want to push? Whereas the unified model actually fixes some of this because essentially what you're doing is allowing the uh, workload to be optimised independently so each GPU can be fully maximized, vastly simplifying that of course. And then obviously we saw another major evolution with RTX uh, with like hardware based ray tracing and obviously AMD and other companies as well have done their part too. But long story short, NVIDIA as always are going to be pushing this quite extensively and marketing it is probably the biggest leap since ever. 
Um, I'm going to be very interested to see how Ampere actually shapes up. We're hearing a lot of rumors concerning the specifications. I've gone over some of these previously. Allegedly, we could be seeing abs absolutely ridiculous amounts of VRAM up to 24 gigabytes, which is a lot of gigabytes of RAM. Um, and apparently, the cards are going to start launching in the latter part of September. Um, I expect they're going to be pretty expensive, that's a guess. Which is probably good as well for people in the used market because you could pick up, let's say, a 2080 or an RTX 2080 Ti for a decent price. So let me know whether you're going to be purchasing the 30 series, or whether it's called the 30 series, or instead if you're going to just hold off and wait and instead pick up, um, well, either RDNA 2 when it's released, and perhaps you'll see benchmarks first, obviously. Or whether you're just going to uh, hold on to what you've got, especially if you've got a decent card now, or whether you're just going to pick up a used card, uh, which obviously, as I just mentioned, have some really good deals going on. And with all of that said, thank you very much for watching the video. The normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. Uh, this is actually a bit of a weird day because we're going to be uploading three videos. This is not something we normally do. I like to have two mags, but there's so much tech news today. I didn't want to try and cram it all into one video uh, because honestly topics would get buried and also I promised people that I would put up my Nintendo exclusive today so I didn't want to disappoint people so today is just kind of weird and we've got free videos but thank you very much for watching of course those other videos will be linked in the description so check them out if you so wish with all of that said take care of yourselves bye for now